Information that could ruin the British monarchy locked in a smartphone. A crime scene surveyed through the camera of a laptop and a blogging Dr. Watson. People want to know you're human. Why? Because they're interested. No, they're not. Why are they? Hmm. Look at that. 1,895. Sorry, what? I reset that counter last night. This blog has had nearly 2,000 hits in the last eight hours. This is your living, Sherlock. Actor Benedict Cumberbatch plays a very modern Sherlock Holmes in the BBC series Sherlock. The first season aired in the U.S. two years ago, and now Sherlock season two begins on PBS this Sunday. Cumberbatch hopes it's a chance for more Americans to discover it. And I just want to bring people in a little bit to that idea of sitting down on a Sunday three consecutive weeks and having that water cooler moment that really was a sort of national sensation in the U.K. because it's kind of fun, and it was an extraordinary cultural moment. His work in Sherlock has led him to roles in Oscar-nominated films Tinker, Tailor, Soldier, Spy, and War Horse, and he'll be appearing in Peter Jackson's The Hobbit, among other high-profile projects. Both of Benedict Cumberbatch's parents are actors, but for the actor, it took leaving the stage to rediscover his passion. Did you ever think, like, God, I was just destined to do this, but maybe, I, no. you know, maybe I'd rather be a lawyer? Or... Well, yeah, well, exactly that. That was exactly what I wanted to be for a while. I mean, my mum and dad worked incredibly hard to afford me an education where I had the privilege of being able to choose or at least have the opportunity to work um, uh, at being anything but an actor. They were living proof of the vagaries of the profession, and um, <laughs> while they've triumphed and, and made a living out of it, which is a miracle considering the percentage of people who aren't employed in our profession. And as I was learning to be a barrister and uh, sort of choosing my levels around potentially doing Oxbridge and doing law conversion courses, I just encountered loads of other people uh, on the same course who said it's so uh, much down to chance and luck. And I thought, well, why am I giving up on my primary dream to work doubly hard to do something as an alternative to what I really still want to do? Was there a Um, moment of a performance that really you look back on and just brought you back? Well, there was a moment of extraordinary humbleness and uh, humility and pride as well with my father when he, he turned to me I think it was after I'd played Salieri in Amadeus at university and he said you, you're better than I ever was or ever could be you, you should do this for a profession you'd have a good time and, and that's a huge thing for a man to say to his son and not necessarily true I might add he's, he's a wonderful actor himself but it was so encouraging and supportive and I knew then that they felt confident enough that I'd have a good ride so I think that was sort of a an emotional turning point, I guess. Um, it was always important to have their blessing, and one of the reasons I get up in the morning is to make them proud. You you have spoken in the past about feeling mm. like you yourself share some qualities with the character Sherlock Holmes. Uh, I'm, I'm not nearly as smart as him, and I'm not as sociopathic, but there are just moments where I think I, like him, can cut off consideration for taking other people with me rather than just expecting them to be mind readers. Um, I, I wondered if you, you ever have to work on getting out of character. I mean, you're sitting there in our studio in New York. I mean, do you walk mm. in there and look for you know, shoelace fibers, <laughs> fingerprints on the keyboard. Yeah, I'm casting I mean. my eye around. It's quite a neat little studio you've got here. The cleaner's obviously been in the night before. I don't think many people have been in there. So what am I looking at? Microphone. Yeah, it's hard. It's hard. I'm really not Sherlock Holmes. I look a little bit like him and sound like him. But... <laughs> you know, the British press has really played mm. up this idea of from Baker Street to, to yeah. Hollywood. Is that a thing? I mean, is that a transition that, that's been tough, extraordinary in some way? No, no. It's just like most press narratives that is much more interesting to read that, you know, somebody sold his soul to the devil and is taking the golden handshake and gone off to Hollywood and has abandoned his homeland which you know immediately happened the minute I stepped foot in in LA to film Star Trek which is kind of tiresome but people still think it sells papers and I think we're living in an era especially in in the British media where there's there's an awful lot of soul searching that should be done at this stage what with the Levinson inquiry and Murdoch being um, held out to task and just being exposed for you know the fraudulent pathetic abhorrent behaviour that is rife in all of our media. I mean, you know, he's being fingered, but the blame could be spread a lot wider. But, you know, people always want to knock you when you're up, so it's it's fine. I can take the rough with this move, but it's kind of disappointingly predictable, I think is what I'm trying to say. Through well, this the J.J. The, the Abrams project, uh, mm. the new Star Trek uh, sequel, I understand that you auditioned for that on an iPhone. I did. Well, my best friend, Adam Ackland, and his wife, Alice, basically helped me out. I was in a bit of a corner. Um, I, I couldn't get any casting directors because of that little... Judo Christian cult that we call Christmas and I, I had to do it on my iPhone and they recorded me in their kitchen at about 11 o'clock. Just like recording video on, on Exactly, iPhone. exactly. I mean, it was kind of romantic. I mean, we are in a modern age where that is feasible but I think it's one of the first I've heard of of actually getting the role that way but... Um, <laughs> <laughs> the, the modern day of mailing and auditions, I guess. Exactly, exactly. It was it, not exactly cold calling because it was asked for 
And JJ was like, "You did that on your iPhone." You know, it was great. He was he was very complimentary about it. So, but I owe it to Adam and Alice for taking the time with their two kids, who were asleep in the background somewhere in their bedrooms. And uh, you know, every night again we'd stop because we thought we heard one of them wake up. And it was it was really sweet, and it was lovely for them to be a part of it. Smog the Dragon uh, yeah. is going to be your character in Peter Jackson's yeah. The Hobbit, and, and the Necromancer as well, which was great fun to do. Can you give us a little Smog the Dragon? I mean, have, have you? Where oh are God, you in no, that no, I can't do that. That's looking behind the curtain. That, that, that's that's one that's coming up. A little different than Sherlock Holmes. Um, yeah, a little different. Is there definitely going to be a, a season three? Is that in the works? Well, I don't know. I mean, it really depends what happens at the end of at the end of the three that you're about to see. You can break news here. It's okay. We're fine with that if you want to tell. Oh, us. are you? <laughs> <laughs> That's good to know. Yeah, just you know. Here's some breaking let news. Let me know. My coffee's lovely. Excellent. That's what we, we you know, we we try our best. Uh, actor Benedict Cumberbatch, you can see him as Sherlock Holmes in Sherlock Series Two, which is starting this Sunday on Masterpiece Mystery on PBS. Benedict, thanks so much for spending time with us. An absolute pleasure, David. Thank you. From NPR News, this is Morning Edition. The engineering supervisor is Kevin Langley. Our technical director is Kurt Stoniker. Audio engineers include Brian Jarbo, Vince Muse, Stacey Abbott, Greg Gavin, and Bill Plummer. Our executive producer is Madalika Sika. The executive editor of news programming is Ellen McDonnell. Morning Edition's theme music was written by B.J. Lederman and arranged by Jim Pugh. Our show is directed by Van Williamson, who we are saying goodbye to this morning. He is retiring after 18 years at NPR, most of them right here as Morning Edition's director. Van is a few feet away from me right now coordinating this broadcast. As all of us at NPR know, Van is a colleague you are instantly drawn to, unflappable under pressure. His smile and good nature just melt away the stress of the day. Morning Edition's Stephen Skeep sends this note. Van's a pro. It's a tribute to his seamless work that when we covered breaking stories, most listeners never heard any sign of the frantic work behind the scenes. Many people did notice another part of Van's work. He chose the music for this program, and we are hearing one of his final selections right now. Van, we wish you the best. I'm David Green.